Hello everyone, Kevil here once again, and it's kinda raining outside here in Kevil Land, so let's follow suit and take on the water level first. Bubble Crab. He joined Sigma, I mean the X Hunters, because he sought wealth and fortune. So they put him in charge of transportation, and he defends the submarine base with his bubble splash and shoulder claws. Because every crab has shoulder claws, I guess. I don't know, I guess it looks prettier than having a gigantic arm. These are baton bone type G. Somehow, they're not the same as the original baton bones from X1. How they're different, I have no idea. And these are fish urns. I like to call them Sharpedos. And this is a sea cantler. It's got three attacks. It's searchlight, which turns into a laser that you see there. It also shoots homing missiles out of its dorsal fin area, which you can see, and mines from its face. Each of its parts are individually destroyable. You can take out its tail fin, for example. Or, my personal favorite, taking out its searchlight, because that makes it a heck of a lot easier to destroy. Once you blow up enough of its parts, it'll just kind of crash into the... There we go. <laughs> like that. These annoying little jellyfish are called Jelly Seekers. They shoot off a little electrical shield. But they're no real threat. Sea Cantler is supposed to be the threat here. Maybe it's Sea Cantler. I honestly don't know. Whoa! Uh. I checked over at my notepad and started doing terribly. Focus on the screen, Kevil. Focus on the screen. Interesting note, I never actually played X2 on the SNES. Uh, back when these games were fairly new, I managed to get X3 and X1 fine, but I never got X2. It wasn't until the early 2000s that I managed to get a copy, a uh, Japanese, Japanese copy. That was terrible pronunciation. So as a result, I know all of the Mavericks by their Japanese names. Bubble Crab becomes Bubbly Crablos. And... I have no idea how to pronounce the name of these wall-hanging laser shooters. It's something like Barite Laystar or Lastar. It's a B-A-R-I-T-L-A-S-T-A-R. I'm thinking a Barite Lastar or Laystar, because it could be like laser. Either way, we're on to Bubble Crab, Bubbly Crablos, who's kind of like Toad Man. He kind of looks like Toad Man for one, and he kind of acts like Toad Man. And here's how. This is his AI pattern. Let's lock him into it. If you can lock him into this pattern, he becomes the easiest Maverick possible. If you can't lock him into this pattern, it can be kind of hard, and the water level can pose some issues, since it can go below safety zone. I consider anywhere below half the screen to be unsafe. You want to shoot him as soon as he lands, with a dash, and then jump right over him. He'll basically do this. I call it Reverse Toad man because as we all know, Toad Man will just jump over you, and this guy will just jump into the air. I'm gonna have to do another take of his actual attacks, because he does have some. <laughs> That'll be kind of the extras slash outtakes for this. Only if I have time. Uh, he's, he's really an easy maverick. He can pose a few issues, though. Killing him, we get his weapon, the bubble, uh, bubble splash. Yes, the bubble splash is what it's called. Normally it does that, and it will continue fi continually fire as you hold down the attack button. And if you charge it up, it'll create a little bubble shield around you. The bubble shield will make you jump higher underwater. And, uh, there actually are a few outtakes. Bubble crab isn't actually too easy to get into that position. There can be a few mistakes if he, depending on what he does, and the stage, eh, not too much of an issue, but still a few outtakes. Enjoy! I'll put this in if I have time. This is just going to be a short representation of the three attacks that Bubble Crab has that we didn't get to see because of his terrible AI. He has 
uh, two regular attacks, and then every Maverick starting in X2 has a desperation move that they'll use when they're low on health. I think it's below half. So, enjoy that! I'll just be cutting this up into the parts of video that's important. His first move that he usually uses... Whoa, he's using both of them now. Well, he shoots out little bubbly representations of himself that will fly in your direction. He also can launch off an aqua bubble, as you see. Let's see if he'll do his desperation attack at me. Nope! He shoots bubbles. Desperation attack, go! Come on, you're low on health. Use it! Use it! Bubbles. There he goes. His desperation attack involves shooting about five of those small crabs that bounce around the screen and make me laugh like crazy. Hello everyone, an upgraded Kevil here for the extras. I have the dash boots and the armor power up to get two of the items in this stage. First up, the heart container, which you technically don't need any special powers for. Just a little bit of patience. One moment. Ah, so close. I prefer doing this without the dash boots. It's a lot easier with them, but I can do it. There we go. Upward to heart container. Increasing X's health slightly. And moving downward. Taking out some jellyfish. Just casually moving through this area. Let's see if I remember where this is. I haven't actually looked it up. So I might be wrong. Ha! Yes, this is correct. I just need to do this right. Okay. Whew! Charging up this weapon allows me to jump really high in the water, which is essential to getting this E-Tank. Also of note, if you jump just right, you can jump on the surface of water in this game. This applies also to X3. It's useful for getting a few of the power-ups. And while it can be difficult to do, it's not that bad. Either way, on to the outtakes. What's the difference? Type G. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was sad. Oh, man. And these are fish urns. Little fish-type torpedo things. They pose no real... F I take that back. I try and take out the searchlight first, because going under him is pretty much your only option. Darn it. He'll either go upwards or downwards at this point. If he goes downwards, it makes it a heck of a lot easier to take him out because of that laser! They electrify themselves, but they're really not too much of an issue. Just move slowly so you don't accidentally bash into one. Whoa! Well, that's just sad. Utilizing the double damage dash to take out these Scrivers makes them a lot easier to take out. Also, getting hit by this guy doesn't make him easy at all. Part of this battle is luck. The water level will rise and fall, and depending how that's happening, it'll be either be... He just... Pummeled me. What the heck? Not cool, man. Not cool. Depending on how high the water is, this stage can be extremely easy, or this boss can be extremely easy, or fairly difficult. Normally, it's fairly easy, though. Oh, but unless that happens, darn it. Shoot him. Otherwise, he might put up his shield, and then it becomes a little bit more difficult, because his timing is off. Oh my god, I just dashed into him, and he had one health left. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was sad. I have to do this again. Bubble Crab is really not all that hard, but just because he suffers from reverse toad manitis doesn't necessarily mean he gets a 1 out of 10. It does, however, mean he gets a 2 out of 10. Sure, it can be problematic to get him into his position that required that's required for that super, super easy AI pattern, but... Really? This guy's easy to fight. I mean, honestly, we only saw one of his moves in my actual run. Given fighting him normally is kind of hard, but not that hard. And with this? This is just pitiful. The mini-boss for his stage is optional, so even the stage is quite easy. Most of the mistakes there, they were just my own mistakes, not due to the stage being really hard. 
For an underwater level, I actually enjoyed it. Usually underwater levels I've found are kind of harder, but this one? Not so much. Enjoyable stage. I, I had fun with this one. And I hope you did too. This is Gevel, signing off. Ciao!